What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today in a DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to animate your logos for a killer intro. Let's get into it. Branding is so huge, especially in today's day and age, whether it's for you or it's for a client and you need to animate a logo. Well, that's what I'm gonna be teaching you guys to do today inside DaVinci Resolve is how to animate a logo to elevate your video. Now, before we get into today's tutorial, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, and that is Artlist. I have been using Artlist for over two years now, and I am always blown away by the quality and the quantity of music they have coming out from their platform. Their amazing library music is always expanding. And whether you need it for a wedding, a music video, a tutorial, an interview, or even a short film, Artlist has got you covered. I'm constantly getting asked by creators or freelancers, what music do I recommend? And I'm always saying Artlist. I have a link in the description below if you guys wanna check it out. It will give you two extra free months when you sign up for a subscription plan. Thank you so much Artlist for supporting my channel and other creators just like me. So now that we've launched DaVinci Resolve, there's a few things we're gonna need to do first. We're gonna need our logo, which is right here, just this terrible quick one that I mocked up, uh, Taco Life Food Truck Company, uh, with a little happy face. That's, I guess, pretty cool. Uh, I would eat there, I guess. Uh, and then we're gonna need a fusion composition. So we're gonna grab our fusion composition, we're gonna bring it into our timeline, and five seconds is more than enough for what we need. And we are going to go ahead and hop inside of Fusion. Now, I personally prefer doing a Fusion composition instead of just editing right off of that photo. And I'll show you why I prefer that here in just a little bit. So once we're inside Fusion, we need to add a background to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a background and I'm gonna connect that to our Merge Out node. That way we're not working right off of the photo I'm gonna go ahead and close this and make it just one window because we really only need one. I'm gonna bring both of these down here and we're gonna go ahead and grab our taco truck and we're gonna bring it down in here and we're gonna connect it to the background node. It'll give us a merge and that will work right there. So what we need to do is we need to start animating this and we are gonna do that by masks. We're gonna grab the polygon tool right here. We're gonna click that and we're gonna bring it up here now, once you connect the polygon to your image, you're gonna realize that you can't see anything. There's two ways you can do it. You can either unlink it right here, or you can still have it linked, and you could go up here under the inspector tools, under the polygon one, and you could hit invert. That way you can see everything. There's really no right or wrong way, but if you do wind up going the invert method, make sure you unclick the invert when you're done, otherwise it's really gonna start messing things up. So I'm just gonna uncheck it and I'm gonna detach that. We can still draw on it and do everything we're gonna do, but we need to just make sure at the end we reconnect everything. With the polygon selected, I'm gonna start drawing around my taco. We'll just kind of do something like this. It doesn't need to be crazy in depth. Bring this up here just to give a little bit more room between the two and you're set. Now, before we reconnect the media to our image, what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this by hitting Command C on a Mac, clicking off of it, Command V, bringing it over here, Command V. That way we've got three of them right here. We're gonna grab the square and we're gonna connect it. That way it gives us a merge. We're gonna do the same thing. That way we're connected all three right there. Awesome, that looks great. We're also gonna add another polygon right here and then clicking off of that, we'll add one more right there. So each one of these has their own layer. You can do as many layers as you want. I just know I have the taco, the banner, and then the wording underneath. So I'm just gonna do three layers, keep it kind of simple. Now in the second one, we are gonna do the same thing. We are going to go around our logo and just like that, you're good to go. Then on our last one, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna do just the food truck. So again, I'm gonna zoom in here to like 400%. I'm gonna move down here. This one should be pretty easy because it's just the wording. Don't have to worry about it too bad. Bring that up here so make sure everything's good. Good, awesome. Zoom back out. Now before we move on, we want to make sure we reconnect all our polygons to our images. That way each layer has their own mask on it. Now this last step is really up to you and how creative you want to get. I'm gonna go pretty simple because I only have three layers, but again, you could take the same method I'm doing and apply it to whatever you're doing. This is something you might get snagged up on. If you click on the polygon, and let's say we're gonna animate it on frame 25, if I start rotating this, it's actually going to mess up our mask around it. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to go back. We don't wanna do that. You could either do two things. You could add a transform node right here to keep everything in there nice and tidy, 
or you can click on the merge node and in here we can move the size and it's not going to mess with anything except for the image so we could overlay this on top of each other and you can see the mask isn't messing anything up so again make sure you're doing all your animations inside the merge or a transform node that you're adding in your node tree and not in the polygon otherwise you're going to get some weird stuff so with merge one selected i'm going to go to frame 15 i'm going to make sure i'm under my inspector merge one merge and I'm going to add a keyframe on center size and angle then I'm going to go to the very beginning at zero and we are going to size it up a little bit and I'm also going to move it over a little bit and we'll just rotate it out that way if we play it through it kind of just slides in just like that I think that's cool then we're going to go to merge two again on keyframe 15 unless you want it to come in differently I'm going to add a keyframe on all three of those. I'm going to go back to the beginning and let's go ahead and size this one up and we'll move it over here. Let's move it down a little bit and let's rotate it like that. Let's bring it all the way out there. That way if we play that through, it kind of slides in just like that. I think that looks good. On merge three, our last one, I'm again gonna be on keyframe 15. However, this time I'm just gonna have it fade on. So I'm gonna go to settings inside the inspector merge three. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna add a keyframe on blend. Then I'm gonna go here to the end and I'm gonna turn it down. That way it kind of just fades on just like that. I think that looks good. Except for I do think I wanna have it move up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and go back to the merge we'll add a keyframe on our x and y we'll go right here so i can see it one frame sooner and we will just move it down just a little bit just like that that way if we play it through it at least has some kind of animation and it moves if you're happy with that you could be completely done right there jump back into your editor and export it out however there are two major steps that i prefer doing that always just seems like it's just got that extra little spice on top of it that's if we click on the spline and then we go to our merge one merge two and merge three let's zoom out so we can see everything and we're going to highlight all of these and we are just going to smooth them out that way the animation is just a little bit smoother as it comes to an end it's not so harsh we're going to click off the spline tool and then what we're going to do is we're going to go in settings under merge three we're going to hit motion blur same thing on two settings motion blur three settings motion blur i prefer doing motion blur last over anything else because it's always going to be the heaviest on your computer Hop back in your editor, play that through, taco truck for life. There you go, guys. That's how you animate a logo and make it look that much better for your videos. If you guys like this video and want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment below. If you're new here, consider subscribing. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.